statement, the Prime Minister. All he wanted for Christmas was a general election, and now, at last, he's got one. Never mind the backstop. The buck stops here. The UK goes to the polls on December the 12th to elect a new government and finally decide the fate of Brexit. Probably. Because even after the votes are counted and a new government is installed, Britain and Europe and Ireland will be back facing three possible outcomes. Deal, no deal, or delay. So how did we get here? And where are we likely to end up? One problem with trying to explain where we are now on Brexit is deciding on a place to start. You could start way back with the referendum vote in 2016, but given we're on to the third Prime Minister since then, let's start a little later. Boris Johnson entered Downing Street in July. His main promise? Ruling out one of the three in the race between deal, no deal and delay. He said he'd be taking the UK out of the EU by the end of the most recent extension, October 31st. Whatever happened. Our mission is to deliver Brexit on the 31st of October. Johnson took power with a slim majority, relying on the votes of the DUP. But his hard line against delay concerned opposition MPs and some of his own party. In an effort to prevent the possibility of what they said would be a disastrous no deal exit on October 31st, they banded together to pass a law. Order! requiring the Prime Minister to request a delay to Brexit if he couldn't get a deal done before October 19th. The eyes have it. The eyes have it. Unlock. So while Johnson ruled out delay, that, the Ben Act, brought it back. And with all that happening, Johnson lost his majority. 21 Conservative MPs who refused to back his hardline stance against delay lost the whip. He was left looking powerless. Yet in the meantime, he was working on one of the other options, deal. At the Conservative Party conference, Johnson came up with a plan to solve the problem of a border returning to the island of Ireland. We will respect the peace process and the, the Good Friday Agreement. And what was this cunning plan? Instead of one border, he was going to create two. Goods would be checked for customs when they moved between north and south, while they would be checked to make sure they met EU standards while crossing the Irish Sea. It was complicated and it was quickly shot down by nearly every Brexit watcher in Brussels. Sorry, but this is all inconsistent. Either uh, you maintain alignment between Northern Ireland and the rest of the island, and that is a republic, and then you can indeed keep your promises under the Good Friday Agreement or you don't and you won't keep the promises. The EU insisted Johnson's plan didn't do enough to protect its cherished single market. It seemed like no deal was winning out, but the proposal did spark something, the start of two of the wildest weeks in years of Brexit. That began on October 10th, with a meeting between Johnson and Tisha Leo Varadkar in a posh manor house in Liverpool. Over three hours, they thrashed out what they called a pathway to a deal. I think it's a good agreement. Uh, it allows the uh, United Kingdom to leave the European Union in an orderly fashion. In effect, Boris Johnson got a deal by breaking his promises to the DUP. A hard border on the island would be prevented by putting customs checks in the Irish Sea. Dublin backed it, and so did the EU. On October 19th, Boris Johnson returned to Parliament with his deal, where he faced the wrath of his former friends. We find that Northern Ireland and Northern Ireland alone will be left within the clutches of the European Union by being de facto members of the customs union tied to European regulations. Like Theresa May before him, Johnson needed a majority of MPs to back his plan to get Brexit done before October 31st. But, like Theresa May before him, the MPs got in the way. I hope the whole House will forgive me if I say that standing here I have a distinct sense of deja vu. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you feel. <laughs> but a few days later, he achieved what Theresa May had failed to do three times. A majority of MPs voted to pass his deal through the initial stage of Parliament. But it was immediately followed by a defeat for Mr Johnson when MPs voted against fast-tracking the legislation through the remaining stages. The MPs wanted more time to scrutinise his plan, to add amendments or raise problems with it. Mr Johnson wasn't keen on that and said he would pause the legislation. I will not negotiate a delay with the EU. And neither... And, and, and neither...
Neither does the law compel me to do so. Johnson ended up having to write a letter to the EU requesting a delay to Brexit. The Benn Act, in combination with some other bits and pieces, had come back to haunt him. He made a big song and dance about not actually wanting to have an extension, but the EU agreed to push back the plan for the UK leaving from October 31st. After all that, and still without a majority, Johnson moved again, saying now is the time for a general election. Now that no deal is off the table, we have a great new deal. We have a great new deal. And it's time for the voters to have a chance to pronounce on that deal. At that point, having repeatedly rejected the Prime Minister's calls for an election, Labour was left in the unenviable position of being the only opposition party opposing an election when the SNP and the Lib Dems decided they wanted one. And so it rapidly did an about turn. We're going to go out there with the biggest campaign this party has ever mounted. Totally united, totally determined, and I'm absolutely looking forward to going every part of this country to give a message of hope where there isn't one with this government. So it's game on, voting on December the 12th. If the Conservatives win, Mr Johnson says he'll push ahead with his deal, which means the UK could be out of Europe by the new deadline of January 31st. In what seems right now the less likely event of a Labour victory, Jeremy Corbyn says he'll renegotiate the deal to keep Britain closer to the EU in future and then put the deal to a referendum. So a fairly lengthy delay. And in the even less likely event that the Liberal Democrats win a majority, they say they'll cancel Brexit entirely. If people elect a majority Liberal Democrat government on day one as Prime Minister, I will revoke Article 50. But even if Johnson's deal passes Westminster or Corbyn's deal is accepted in a referendum, that does not mean, as Mr Johnson claims, that Brexit will be done. In pretty much all this, we're just talking about the withdrawal agreement. And the withdrawal agreement is the easy bit. The real difficulty comes with negotiating the UK's future relationship with Europe. That's supposed to be done by the end of 2020. And again, there are three possible outcomes. A deal by then. A delay. Or no deal. But with potentially devastating economic consequences for Ireland. Fasten your seatbelts. The Brexit ride is about to get even bumpier.